At the end of this four week period, uh, usually the patients are discharged uh, and they go home. And there are some things that patient, patients need to be aware of when they get home. And one of those things is um, the lifestyle changes that the patient uh, should stick to uh, while recovering and from the transplant and taking lots of medicines from the transplant. Usually we advise that patients um, avoid unnecessary visitors during this time period, stay or in isolation, uh, eat food which is cooked and clean and the whole idea of cooked and clean food with a high protein is to help with recovery and to prevent infection from uh, the food. When the patients get home, uh, apart from the dietary restrictions and the isolation, uh, they usually need um, some amount of moderate exercise and they also need to uh, keep a very healthy lifestyle. Uh, the important thing is they should stick to their medication routine and make sure they're taking all their medication in time. We also call the patients for close follow-up during this time, especially when uh, patients are discharged very early on, uh, to make sure that if any medicine modification is needed, uh, that that is done on a timely basis. Depending on the type of transplant they've had, uh, between three and six months is the time when they can get back to their normal life. And usually after autologous transplants, where the patient themselves are the donor, uh, they get back to work. Uh, and usually after six months after an allogenic transplant, they're likely to get back to work. So there are special tests, um, both to look at whether the stem cells from the donor have come and engrafted, uh, the patient's blood group will change, and there is a test called chimerism analysis, uh, which we look at the DNA of the blood to see if that DNA matches uh, the donor or the recipient uh, and if so in what percentage and that kept test gives us a good idea of how to modify the medicines and it also tells us uh, what's the percentage of donor cells in the blood. Um, there is also another way you can monitor the success of the transplant which is looking at the disease itself. So depending on what kind of disease the patient has had, uh, we can monitor uh, the amount of disease that is still present in the blood or the bone marrow and can say whether the transplant has worked well. So there are some side effects that we need to be aware of uh, even after the transplant has been successful and all the medicines have been stopped, uh, which is usually three to six months. And after that happens, uh, we put patients on regular long-term follow-up to see if there are complications which have developed as a result of the transplant. One of the major things that we worry about uh, after all the medicines have stopped and the patients worry about is the disease coming back, uh, which is called a relapse. And so it is important that patients keep under close follow-up and uh, do the blood tests and the scans as advised by their doctor uh, to make sure that if such a relapse has to happen, we pick it up very early on. The other thing that um, we need to worry about is organ dysfunction. Uh, that can happen as a result of the transplant, usually damage to the liver or kidneys, which is fairly rare, or uh, damage to the thyroid gland. Uh, we also need to make sure uh, that there are no other skin, liver, or gut related complications or graft versus host, develop versus host disease developing uh, later on, uh, which if picked up early can be treated very well.